Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop. You know, I made a comment this morning over breakfast, and now someone's going to hold my feet to the fire. I have to take this rather unassuming looking chunk of 316 stainless. Uh, it's about 7 eighths by inch and a quarter, eighth of an inch thick, and turn it into something that I was bragging about making, and now i got to do it. Anyway, this is also something, this is an answer to a viewer's question about how to machine a very specific shape uh, without having to break out a CNC or a rotary table or whatever else. Now I'm not going to tell you what I'm making. As it develops you're going to see how the technique or the the path that I take to arrive at the final geometry but I think you'll like what you see. So let's take the uglies off of this over on the sander, put it on a pair of parallels and put it in the mill. Stay tuned. Alrighty as not to skip over anything this is a parallel blank just sides are parallels, nothing special about it. And I have finished two corners or two edges. Shine them up on the Scotch Bray wheel. Here's the setup one thin parallel in the back, one fat parallel in the front. Well, let's get this camera on a tripod and we'll get this part going and show you how easy this is. Alright, now I promise that this is going to be relatively quick. I am not going to use an edge finder. I am going to do everything by eye. Everything. 375 gauge pin in the drill chuck. I'm going to move this down until the light disappears between the pin and the back jaw. I'm going to zero out my digital. I'm going to move half the diameter of the pin. One eighty-seven. One eighty-seven five. Zero it again. All right. Now the back draw is directly under the center of the pin. Piece of cake. With the digital or the dial zeroed, I can move the pin within the channel of the jaws. I'm going to put the finished sides against the pin, against the back jaw. I'm going to move the table until I like the position of the part in the vise, which is right there. I'm going to bump up against the pin, lock the part. Zero the X digital. Move half the pin, 187 and a half. Zero it again. All right, I am directly over the center of the pin in the X as zeroed, and I'm directly over the center of the pin in the rear as Y is zeroed. Let's put a couple holes in it. Going to start off with a 5 16 diameter drill. I started off with a very undersized hole because I'm going to get back in there and I'm going to clean them up and plunge them with a 375 end mill. I'll show you the drawing on this when I'm done, but these holes are positioned exactly 45 degrees apart from the two surfaces. Let's plunge a 3 8 end mill. Creates four flute carbide. I do expect the holes to overlap. That is not a problem. That is part of the plan.
two overlapping holes. Breaking through in the center, perfect. Let's change to a smaller cutter. I'm going to put a quarter inch in there and then ultimately an eighth inch. I currently have a 250 cutter in the machine. I am going to nibble out the corner. And that would be this corner right here. So whatever size cutter that you used initially, whatever size cutter you step down to, just offset that much to maintain tangent to the wall. I'm going to do this first part by eye, then I'm going to dial in some numbers and we'll clean it up with a smaller diameter. Okay, we can get a little bit closer so that the small cutter does not have to work so much. switch over to an eighth inch diameter. Alright, eighth inch cutter is in there. We're going to take and smooth out the entire back wall and take the larger radius out of that corner right there. Let's go. I think by now it's pretty obvious the shape that you can achieve by doing this. 45 degrees. With the eighth inch cutter still in the machine, I'm going to put a pin in there now and I'm going to position it right on the high spot in the center. I would very much like this to end up tangent to both of those outer arcs.
I gotta say that's pretty close right there. Now by looking at the digital, making that little hole tangent is exactly in the center of that right there. So whatever the distance is from your X over and from your Y out, just go center to center right there and that's just a beautiful spot to be. In this particular part that is 510. For anybody doing the metric conversion, that is about, it was like 510 in my head, it's not really fair to say in my head, it's not, 13 millimeters, just shy of 13 millimeters. Let's pop another hole right there. throw it on the bench take a look okay for those of you that have asked me in the past how to make a heart that's how you do it a pair of overlapping holes set at a 45 degree angle to each other make sure that they overlap and break out you can adjust whatever you need to adjust I'm going to put this across the belt sander round some of these corners off and probably get a die grinder to do the top work I will do everything in my power to show you that but this is what we have so far and always in stainless you can expect the back to blow up like this if you do not have a backing plate or a sandwich laminate on the back of it that is completely normal and if you saw me pecking at it real slow it's because I was kind of hoping for some decent surface finishes on the inside and I think I've achieved that alright so let me swap the blade out on the bandsaw do some close up work and we'll clean this up and take it home to mama Roundy points right there, guys. Let's get on the bandsaw. Okay, just a little memory jog here. Before I start this setup, this is not the blade you want to use. This part fits in between the teeth, and since it is steel, it wouldn't take more than just a little bit of an oops, and all of these teeth are going to go goodbye. So I have to swap over to a much finer tooth blade, and I have to make sure that the throat plate in the machine is a zero clearance so I will probably put a piece of uh, melamine across there just to do that so remember that look at the gap in the blade right there too much you'd like to see at least two teeth engaged at all times let's change over to a fine tooth Okay, I think you can see that this is the perfect choice for a blade for this material thickness. I also have the machine in low range. You do not want to run stainless across the bandsaw at high speed. You will just tear it up. And I know the camera makes those teeth look like they're backwards, but trust me, they're not. Okay, let's rough it out. I can assure you that part is a lot hotter than it looks. Going to need a cup of water for the sander. Let's round off these edges and start coming around. This is going to be back and forth between the sander and the saw. And we'll finish it off with a file.
let's touch it up on a fiber wheel so we can see it a little bit better. Continue. Well, that's what we got so far. I tell you, if you didn't watch the video on deburring your work and those scotch bright wheels that I use in this shop, you really should because it can take a sanded surface and make it look like a jewel in no time at all. So I want to knock out some of these corners in here and so it's a little more of a pendant shape. There you go. And we'll just clean it up a little bit and take it off. Back on the bandsaw. I want to take some more of these corners out. I may finish up with a die grinder. Who knows? About five minutes from being done. Stick around. All right, final polish on this guy. We are going to use a Triple O Norton polishing compound. I believe this is a 500 grit. It's a white paste. I've had it forever. I absolutely love it. Just a plain old piece of white paper here. I'm going to lay down on the top of the bandsaw. I'll get some of that on there. we go. Yeah, I know a lot of you guys are going to be screaming at me to do a figure eight. I'm not interested in doing a figure eight. It does cut quicker, but the surface on this is pretty clean to begin with, so I'm not going to get carried away with it. charge for the other side and if you're wondering what a figure eight is a figure eight is just that you move the part in an eight pattern I'll do this exaggerated so you can see it but you move it in an eight pattern what this does is if you're rolling grooves into your part you don't make the grooves deeper by coming across this way you knock the high spots off the grooves that you form going this way so it's a constant X pattern and it works very well for polishing but I'm a very limited space right here and I know the part is already clean so I'm just gonna go for it this way part's pretty filthy but I know there's a shine under there let's shoot it with some alcohol Soap and water, take a picture. Okay, I elected not to make an eyelet out of the top here because I just don't think it's worth it. I kind of like the way it's shaped up right there. Hanging on a pendant with a link in the top, you're going to see the inside and really not pay attention to the outside. Finish came out real nice. Like a mirror on that one side. I really do like that. That's pretty. Well, there you go, guys. Not impossible to make a heart on a manual milling machine. Just approach it from 45 degrees. Use finished corners. And make sure that you don't use a blank that's so small that halfway through the operation, you crush it with the mill. Hope you like that. Give you something else to go out and kill a couple hours on. Appreciate you watching. Joe Pye Advanced Innovations in Austin, Texas. I'm out.